Hey, this is Stephen Ament. Welcome to my Exorcism.io series. In this video, I thought I would give an overview of my Vim and Tmux setup, what's actually happening on my screen. My colleague Ryan suggested this last week after watching some of the early videos that I've posted. Uh, it reminded him of when we were first working together, and it was his introduction to pairing in this uh, sort of environment. And he said that what he found confusing was not so much what we were doing from a code perspective, but what was just what was happening on the screen these what's going on in which pane where am i supposed to be looking now as things are jumping around so he thought it would be helpful if i gave sort of an overview of what you're looking at so um if you're not familiar with those tools it's two tools two separate tools that i'm talking about tmux which is a terminal multiplexer for unix like environments uh, which i you know i have here i think i installed it from homebrew on my my Mac, it allows you to, in the terminal, have multiple screens, multiple panes, and multiple tabs, things going on. So I can, I can split my view side to side, I can split it um, vertically as well. And I have several different, as you can see, terminals here, different command lines with different things going on in each. Uh, yep, you can close them the same way. And then inside of Tmux, I'm running Vim, which is a, another Unix-based uh, command line text editor. It's a very powerful editor. It can be a little bit in intimidating if you've never worked with it before because it has a command mode versus an insert mode. And so you use your keys to navigate around instead of the mouse, and then you can jump into insert mode. There's lots of uh, powerful text editing and navigation controls. Uh, it's something that I have found in my career worth the effort to learn. Um, but it's not, ne it's not necessary, right? It's not something that everybody has to do. But what, what becomes confusing about this Tmux Vim combination is that Vim also allows you to split your screen into multiple panes and open up multiple tabs. And so um, I've got both of those things going on here. So let's just take a look at it. I, let's, I'm, I'm in the Hamming directory here. And what I'll show you first is I split my Tmux window into two vertical panes. So if I do that now here and go into the same directory, uh, Hamming here, in the top pane, I'm gonna be running Vim, where I'm gonna have my code open. In the bottom pane, I'm gonna be executing my tests. So it'll be running separately, but you'll see these panes uh, sort of opening and closing and and all that's happening is, is I'm changing the size of the top and bottom pane when I'm doing that I have a shortcut set up to maximize and I guess unmaximize uh, the, the current pane that I'm in see I can do it down here too so that's something that you're seeing going on and I'll show you where that's happening in a minute so let me go ahead and open open the code and and so, and I'll maximize this, this pane. And so in Vim, I like to split my window too. I like to have my class under test here on the left-hand pane. And then I like to vertically split and have my test on the right. So I've got my test over here and I've got my class over here that's actually the code that's actually being tested or being developed when I'm doing TDD. And so what you're gonna see happen here when I run my tests, uh, I have a mapping set up that when I hit F4, so let me show you um, the actual mapping from my vimrc.local. It should be, yeah, here we go, map F4. And so what it's gonna do is gonna write the current file, and then it's gonna call a system command to send some instructions to Tmux. It's going to resize <laughs> tier two or the bot or tile two, the bottom pane, to be 20 lines tall, and then send that pane the command Ruby, uh, giving it the mini test pride uh, color plugin, uh, and then run mini test with uh, whatever test file is in the current directory, and then if the test pass, if that returns successfully, it's going to close that pane basically, and jump back up 
to the top pane. So let, let's see that in action. If I hit F4, you're gonna see, see it happen really fast, right? Because the command succeeded. And so let me jump down to the bottom pane. Here it is, you can see the output. Everything ran, there were no errors. And so that command returned successfully and therefore we got put back up here with that pane maximized. Now, if there's an, if there's an error in here, um, like this, that's gonna cause a failure. Uh, that that pane is gonna stay open, and then we can maximize it and jump around here and see what's see what's going on. But anyway, this this is what you're looking at in my setup. I've got in the top pane vim, which is split into two panes left and right, with my class on the left and my tests on the right, and then I have a bottom pane set up for running my tests and a mapping setup. So I, I just hit F4, it runs my tests. And if it's, um, if it's successful, it closes the pane and I'm back on top with my, uh, you know, my maximized window. I can, I can kind of see as much as possible up here. That's what's going on. So let me know if that makes sense. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them in a future video.